The Royal Navy is the United Kingdom's naval warfare force. Although warships were used by the English kings from the early medieval period, the first major maritime engagements were fought in the Hundred Years' War against the Kingdom of France. The modern Royal Navy traces its origins to the early 16th century and it's the oldest of the UK's armed services, also known as the Senior Service. From the middle decades of the 17th century, and through the 18th century, the Royal Navy vied with the Dutch Navy and later with the French Navy for maritime supremacy. From the mid-18th century, it was the world's most powerful navy until the Second World War. The Royal Navy played a key part in establishing the British Empire as the unmatched world power during the 19th and first part of the 20th centuries. Following World War I, the Royal Navy was significantly reduced in size, although at the onset of World War II it was still the world's largest. During the Cold War, the Royal Navy transformed into a primarily anti-submarine force, hunting for Soviet submarines and mostly active in the GI-UK gap. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union, its focus has returned to expeditionary operations around the world and it remains one of the world's foremost blue water navies. However, 21st century reductions in naval spending have led to a personnel shortage and a reduction in the number of warships. The Royal Navy maintains a fleet of technologically sophisticated ships, submarines, and aircraft, including two aircraft carriers, amphibious transport docks, ballistic missile submarines which maintain the UK's nuclear deterrent, and various frigates and patrol vessels. The Royal Fleet Auxiliary replenishes Royal Navy warships at sea, and augments the Royal Navy's amphibious warfare capabilities through its three Bay-class landing ship vessels. It also works as a force multiplier for the Royal Navy, often doing patrols that frigates used to do. The total displacement of the Royal Navy is approximately 822,600 tons including the Royal Fleet Auxiliary. The Royal Navy is part of Her Majesty's Naval Service, which also includes the Royal Marines. The professional head of the Naval Service is the First Sea Lord who is an Admiral and member of the Defence Council of the United Kingdom. The Defence Council delegates management of the Naval Service to the Admiralty Board, chaired by the Secretary of State for Defence. The Royal Navy operates from three bases in the United Kingdom where commissioned ships and submarines are based, Portsmouth, Clyde and Devonport, the latter being the largest operational naval base in Western Europe, as well as two naval air stations, RNAS Yeovilton and RNAS Culdrose where maritime aircraft are based. The strength of the fleet of the Kingdom of England was an important element in the Kingdom's power in the 10th century. At one point Ethelred II had an especially large fleet built by a national levy of one ship for every 310 hides of land, but it is uncertain whether this was a standard or exceptional model for raising fleets. During the period of Danish rule in the 11th century, the authorities maintained a standing fleet by taxation, and this continued for a time under the restored English regime of Edward the Confessor, who frequently commanded fleets in person. English naval power seemingly declined as a result of the Norman conquest. Following the Battle of Hastings, the Norman navy that brought over William the Conqueror seemingly disappeared from records. Though William the Conqueror caused a massive decline in English naval practices, he did occasionally assemble small fleets of ships, but only for limited activities. Most of these limited actions also did not involve direct combat at sea. Medieval fleets, in England as elsewhere, were almost entirely composed of merchant ships enlisted into naval service in time of war. From time to time a few king's ships owned by the monarch were built for specifically warlike purposes, but unlike some European states, England did not maintain a small permanent corps of warships in peacetime. England's naval organisation was haphazard and the mobilisation of fleets when war broke out was slow. There are mentions in medieval records of fleets commanded by Scottish kings including William the Lion and Alexander II. The latter took personal command of a large naval force which sailed from the Firth of Clyde and anchored off the island of Carrera in 1249, intended to transport his army in a campaign against the Kingdom of the Isles, but he died before the campaign could begin. With the Viking era at an end, and conflict with France largely confined to the French lands of the English monarchy, England faced little threat from the sea during the 12th and 13th centuries, but in the 14th century the outbreak of the Hundred Years' War dramatically increased the French menace. Early in the war French plans for an invasion of England failed when Edward III of England destroyed the French fleet in the Battle of Sluys in 1340. King James I of Scotland took a greater interest in naval power. After his return to Scotland in 1424, he established a shipbuilding yard at Leith, a house for marine stores, and a workshop. King's ships were built and equipped there to be used for trade as well as war, one of which accompanied him on his expedition to the islands in 1429. 
the office of Lord High Admiral was probably founded in this period. It would soon become a hereditary office, in the control of the Earls of Bothwell in the 15th and 16th centuries and the Earls of Lennox in the 17th century. A standing Navy Royal, with its own secretariat, dockyards and a permanent core of purpose-built warships, emerged during the reign of Henry VIII. Under Elizabeth I England became involved in a war with Spain, which saw privately owned vessels combining with the Queen's ships in highly profitable raids against Spanish commerce and colonies. During the early 17th century, England's relative naval power deteriorated, and there were increasing raids by Barbary corsairs on ships and English coastal communities to capture people as slaves, which the navy had little success in countering. Charles I undertook a major program of warship building, creating a small force of powerful ships, but his methods of fundraising to finance the fleet contributed to the outbreak of the English Civil War. In the wake of this conflict and the abolition of the monarchy, the new Commonwealth of England, isolated and threatened from all sides, dramatically expanded the navy, which became the most powerful in the world. The new regime's introduction of navigation acts, providing that all merchant shipping to and from England or her colonies should be carried out by English ships, led to war with the Dutch Republic. English tactical improvements resulted in a series of crushing victories in 1653 at Portland and Scheveningen, bringing peace on favourable terms. This was the first war fought largely, on the English side, by purpose-built, state-owned warships. It was followed by a war with Spain, which saw the English conquest of Jamaica in 1655 and successful attacks on Spanish treasure fleets in 1656 and 1657, but also the devastation of English merchant shipping by the privateers of Dunkirk, until their home port was captured by Anglo-French forces in 1658. The English monarchy was restored in May 1660, and Charles II assumed the throne. One of his first acts was to re-establish the navy, but from this point on, it ceased to be the personal possession of the reigning monarch, and instead became a national institution, with the title of the Royal Navy. During the 1670s and 1680s, the English Royal Navy succeeded in permanently ending the threat to English shipping from the Barbary pirates, inflicting defeats which induced the Barbary states to conclude long-lasting peace treaties. In the course of the 17th century, the English Royal Navy completed the transition from a semi-amateur Navy Royal fighting in conjunction with private vessels into a fully professional institution. Its financial provisions were gradually regularized, it came to rely on dedicated warships only, and it developed a professional officer corps with a defined career structure, superseding an earlier mix of upper-class soldiers and professional seamen, who generally served on merchant or fishing vessels in peacetime. The Acts of Union, which created the Kingdom of Great Britain in 1707, established the Royal Navy of the newly United Kingdom. The Scots Office of Lord High Admiral was subsumed within the Office of the Admiral of Great Britain. The three vessels of the small Royal Scottish Navy were transferred to the Royal Navy. Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, the Royal Navy was the largest maritime force in the world, but until 1805 combinations of enemies repeatedly matched or exceeded its forces in numbers. Despite this, it was able to maintain an almost uninterrupted ascendancy over its rivals through superiority in financing, tactics, training, organization, social cohesion, hygiene, dockyard facilities, logistical support and warship design and construction. Between 1815 and 1914, the Navy saw little serious action, owing to the absence of any opponent strong enough to challenge its dominance. During this period, naval warfare underwent a comprehensive transformation, brought about by steam propulsion, metal ship construction, and explosive munitions. Despite having to completely replace its war fleet, the Navy managed to maintain its overwhelming advantage over all potential rivals. Due to British leadership in the Industrial Revolution, the country enjoyed unparalleled shipbuilding capacity and financial resources, which ensured that no rival could take advantage of these revolutionary changes to negate the British advantage in ship numbers. During the First World War, the Royal Navy's strength was mostly deployed at home in the Grand Fleet, confronting the German High Seas Fleet across the North Sea. Several inconclusive clashes took place between them, chiefly the Battle of Jutland in 1916. The British numerical advantage proved insurmountable, leading the High Seas Fleet to abandon any attempt to challenge British dominance. In the interwar period, the Royal Navy was stripped of much of its power, the Washington and London Naval Treaties imposed the scrapping of some capital ships and limitations on new construction. International tensions increased in the mid-1930s and the Second London Naval Treaty of 1935 failed to halt the development of a naval arms race. By 1938, treaty limits were effectively being ignored. 
The rearmament of the Royal Navy was well underway by this point therefore had begun construction of the still treaty affected new battleships and its first full-sized purpose-built aircraft carriers. In addition to new construction, several existing old battleships, battlecruisers and heavy cruisers were reconstructed, and anti-aircraft weaponry reinforced, while new technologies were developed. At the start of World War II in 1939, the Royal Navy was the largest in the world, with over 1,400 vessels. The Royal Navy suffered heavy losses in the first two years of the war, most critical struggle being the Battle of the Atlantic defending Britain's vital commercial supply lines against U-boat attack. After the Second World War, the decline of the British Empire and the economic hardships in Britain forced the reduction in the size and capability of the Royal Navy. All of the pre-war ships were quickly retired and most sold for scrapping over the years 1945 to 1948, and only the best condition ships were retained and refitted for service. HMS Dreadnought, the Royal Navy's first nuclear submarine, was launched in the 1960s. The Navy also received its first nuclear weapons with the introduction of the first of the Resolution-class submarines armed with the Polaris missile. By the 1990s, the Navy became responsible for the maintenance of the UK's entire nuclear arsenal. The financial costs attached to nuclear deterrence became an increasingly significant issue for the Navy. The Royal Navy also took part in the Gulf War, the Kosovo conflict, the Afghanistan campaign, and the 2003 invasion of Iraq, the last of which saw RN warships bombard positions in support of the Al Four Peninsula landings by Royal Marines. In August 2005, the Royal Navy rescued seven Russians stranded in a submarine off the Kamchatka Peninsula. The Navy's Scorpio 45 remote-controlled mini-sub freed the Russian submarine from the fishing nets and cables that had held it for three days. The Royal Navy was also involved in an incident involving Somali pirates in November 2008, after the pirates tried to capture a civilian vessel. Today Royal Navy have, at Torpoint, Cornwall, a basic training facility for newly enlisted ratings. Britannia Royal Naval College is the initial officer training establishment for the Navy, located at Dartmouth, Devon. Personnel are divided into a warfare branch, which includes warfare officers and naval aviators, as well other branches including the Royal Naval Engineers, Royal Navy Medical Branch, and Logistics Officers, the renamed Supply Officer Branch.